So Tim Waltz gave a rally speech in Milwaukee, and man, he really he really went insky here after Trump and Vance. And um, look, one of the things that I love about having him on the campaign trail, apart from the fact that he just seems like a likable guy, is he is really leaning into policy and really, uh, you know, breaking it down for people like, hey, here are the different visions of the country that you can choose from. And I think it basically speaks for itself. Let's watch and we'll break it down. Just think what would happen if Wisconsin, if you gave this man a majority in the House and Senate, what would happen here? Just imagine. One vote, one Senate vote in Minnesota was the difference between that. One Senate vote in Minnesota gave us paid family and medical leave. One vote expanded health care. Mm. One vote made sure that we're addressing climate change. That's what you can give to this governor, and that's what we need to give to Vice President Harris. That's our vision for the country. Now, look, we don't expect everybody to think like us. Now, we know that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they have a little bit different vision of America. I do say this. He does know something about working people. Donald Trump does. He knows how to take advantage of them. That's what he knows how to do. Every single chance these guys have gotten, they've waged war on workers in the middle class. As president, Trump blocked overtime for millions of workers. Hell, why pay the bills? He doesn't pay his own. Why should we pay somebody for overtime? What are they going to do? That's what they do. He opposed efforts to raise the minimum wage, for God's sakes. That shouldn't be that difficult. If people put in an honest day's work, they should receive an honest day's pay. By the way, we covered that clip of J.D. Vance was asked recently at some press conference um, what the Trump Vance position on the minimum wage is, and he completely dodged it. In other words, I'm not in favor of raising the minimum wage, even though I'm pretending like I'm pro-worker and I'm populist. Cannot take these guys seriously. Um, J.D. Vance's report card from the AFL-CIO, his union report card, he got a 0% for the year 2023. He's against the pro. If you're against the pro act and against raising the minimum wage, there is no universe in which anybody can call you pro worker and be honest. It's just not true. And by the way, he's right about this is something that I think a lot of people don't remember or don't know. Trump did stiff a lot of his own workers. If he doesn't give a shit about his own workers at his companies, what makes you think he's going to look out for American workers? Which, by the way, we lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs under Trump. We gained 800,000 under Joe Biden. So he's right. He's spitting, man. He's spitting. And look, I know Wisconsin knows this. Again, give him a working majority because he's a guy who supports so-called right to work laws that deprives unions of the funds they need. Everybody here today knows what right to work really means. It means the right to work for less money. It means the right to work in dangerous situations. It means the right to work with no pensions. That's what right to work means. It doesn't help with our ability to collectively bargain and to fight with the dignity of work that we know every single person in America deserves. So look, I sometimes say this, we're running for something. We're running to run forward to the future. And I don't think it's always great to run against something, but I do think it's important to be informed. If you think those guys were bad the last time he was in the White House, just wait if he gets another shot at it. And again, they have told us exactly what they're going to do. The goals in Project 2025 are clear. It should be subtitled, How to Screw the Working People. That's how it should be listed. When you make it harder to unionize, you make it harder on all workers. Allowing employers to cut overtime pay or even eliminate it. Look, Project 2025 is even going after the 40-hour work week. Let's all be very clear. It's the folks standing here and those whose shoulders we stand on gave us the 40-hour work week and the weekend. So thank you, Labor. Somebody, somebody said, what's next, child labor? Hell yeah, it's in there. That's what they've got in there. You see states doing that, putting our children at risk. That's what they'll do. How many times, bro? How many times have we said, all you have to do is bring up what's in Project 2025 or what's in Agenda 47, which is Trump's personal version of Project 2025. All you have to do is read that and you'll walk away going, oh my God, these people are fucking psychopaths. These people are out of their damn minds. So um, he brings up a couple things there. They're coming after overtime pay. They're coming after the 40-hour work week. Uh, they're coming to roll back child labor laws. This is literally what they're already doing in red states. Um, one of the things House Republicans said was their top priority is passing a law to ban individual states 
from doing free school breakfast and free school lunch for kids? I want you to stop and think about how fucking evil that is. So you have a bunch of blue states with good Democratic governors who are passing laws to do free school breakfast or free school lunch, right? And the Republicans at the national level are like, no, we want to ban you from even having the option to do that. Which, by the way, what happened? I thought you guys support uh, decentralizing power and federalism and, hey, let the states make their own decisions. No, apparently not. If the states do left-wing based shit, they want to get in the way and say, nope, you're not allowed to do that. You are not allowed to do that. Project 2025, ban porn. Ban porn. They really, this is the conversation that we're having here. This is the conversation that we're having. Unitary executive theory, which is no checks, no balances. Just let the president basically be an emperor, overlord, dictator. Destroy the EPA. Destroy the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. This is what they want to do. And all he's doing is pointing at, hey, this is what they say they want to do. That's all he's doing. And that's all you have to do. And they implode. And I keep saying this. Repeal the Affordable Care Act. Go back to no pre-existing condition protections. And even if you're not on the ACA, you know somebody who relies on it. And here's what I say. They don't think a damn about Social Security, because I guess if you've got a billion dollars, you don't care if your Social Security check shows up. But I tell you who does. My mom. She pays the bills with that in the heat and buys food with her Social Security check. And she worked for it and earned it. That's how it works. Look. I know this is preaching to the choir, but we got about 64 days to sing, choir. We got 64 days to get to our relatives, to talk to them, to tell them what's out there. Look, this guy has made it clear how he stands. He's sitting down at Mar-a-Lago after he got elected president, and this was his exact quote. He's talking to a bunch of folks at Mar-a-Lago. You're rich as hell, and we're going to give you a tax cut. At the same time, he was telling workers they get paid too much already. That's who this guy is. You tell me. Who in Wisconsin is sitting around saying, damn, I wish they'd give billionaires tax cuts and screw me over. Damn, I wish they'd take my health care away. I wish they'd underfund my public school. I wish they would make my job more difficult, more dangerous. And then at the end of the day, I wish they'd make me work till I'm 75 years old. No one's saying that. No one's asking for that agenda. What they're asking for is to be treated fairly with dignity. That's what we have. He's killing him. By the way, you, you, do you do understand, right, why it's the case that Republicans are viciously leaning into smearing Tim Walls? with the most made-up, grotesque shit you've ever seen, right? You do understand why they're doing that. They're doing that precisely because he can give a speech like this. They know, without a doubt, listen, man, we can't beat this guy when it comes to policy. We can't beat him in a competition of who's more populist. We can't beat him in a competition of charisma. You think J.D. Vance is going to out-charisma this guy? So what are we going to do? I don't know. What, did you see what Megyn Kelly did the other day? She invited on some assholes who were in the National Guard at the same time as Tim Walls. And they're just Republican hacks. And they just go on her show and start saying Republican hack shit. Calling him indefensible and immoral. And he, he ran away when we needed him the most, etc. Because he didn't go to the Iraq war because he didn't believe in the Iraq war. He thought it was a bullshit war. And he went on to run against it when he ran for Congress. Right? They know, hey, we can't beat him, so let's just smear him. Let's just hit below the belt. Let's attack his son for crying. Let's attack him for, for his fucking dog. Like, you guys are so goddamn deranged. And this is why, because of what you're seeing right here, because he fucking knows how to deliver a line, knows how to deliver a speech, and knows how to tell people the policy reality. This is a substantive speech. This is what they're in favor of. This is what we're in favor of. You guys go ahead and decide, and I know what decision you're going to make after I tell you the truth of where they stand. I know. We all know this. I remember a time when Republicans talked about things like freedom. They meant it. They would never turn their back on our allies. But that's not these guys. Trump and Vance, when they talk about freedom, means government should have the freedom to invade every corner of our life. They talk about small government, small enough to be in your bedroom, small enough to be in your exam room, small enough to be in your library, telling you the things that you should make decisions about. So let's be very clear. Where I come from and where you come from as neighbors, we respect differences. That's your opinion. Look, we're sitting here together, Brewers and Twins fans, Vikings and Packers. Look, we respect it. But on things like health care and what books I read and democracy, we all live by that very simple golden rule. Mind your own damn business. Mind your own business. Your Republican neighbors want to live that way. We have to tell that story. But look, I agree with this. We have a responsibility 
to tell people not just what we're against, but what we're for. So let me just take a second here to tell you exactly what Vice President Harris and I will do. As President, Vice President Harris will sign the PRO Act, make it easier to form unions, period. period. And you know what comes out of that? You can collectively bargain. You can go do the work to get fairer wages, safer working conditions, good health care, and a good pension. I saw last week the Wall Street Journal was trying to say, because they did a story, that apparently I am the poorest person to ever run for vice president. So then, but then they did another story that said, oh, he's actually richer than his statement says, because he has, and I quote, like this is an evil thing, a defined benefit pension plan. That is my wish for every American to have a defined benefit pension plan. Let's go, son. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, my God. He flipped that. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine Kamala pick somebody else, bro? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It would have been horrific if she went with Josh Shapiro or she went with Mark Kelly. Oh, it, it was the, be the best move she's ever made by far. We'll lower taxes on working families and we can make corporations pay their fair share. Look, they're doing really well. They can pay their fair share because guess what? We have a saying in Minnesota, when everybody does better, everybody does better. It's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. And you can be sure we'll keep fighting for Social Security and Medicare, and we're damn sure not going to taxes for the wealthy and raise the age on Medicare and Social Security. That will not happen. So look, we got it in Minnesota, and we want it for everybody. We're going to fight for paid family and medical leave for everybody in this country. Let me tell you something. If Kamala and Tim Walls win, and let's say, let's say, for argument's sake, the only things they get accomplished, paid family leave, paid medical leave, free school breakfast and lunch for kids all across this country. Let's say that's the only thing they get done. They would win re-election in a landslide in 2028. It wouldn't be close. It wouldn't be close. Because Americans would be reminded, oh shit, you're telling me it's theoretically possible and pragmatically possible for our government to actually do some shit that helps us in our lives? Wow, I didn't know that. I forgot what that felt like. And he just said it. We're going to fight for uh, paid family leave, paid medical leave. Look, you guys have heard me go through his record before. You're probably tired of me running through it. But this is what people need to understand. If this is any indication, if this is an indication of just, if they do 15% of these things, they will be the most popular president and vice president since fucking FDR. You understand? So what did he do in Minnesota with a one-seat majority? And what did he fight for when he was in Congress? Universal free school meals, legal weed, carbon-free electricity by 2040, tax rebates for the working class up to $1,300, 12 weeks paid family leave, 12 weeks paid sick leave. He banned gay conversion therapy because it's a scam. He did red flag laws for guns. Universal background checks for guns, automatic voter registration, free co uh, public college for the working class, a ban on the PFAS, which are the forever chemicals, which, by the way, RFK Jr., I thought that was like a big thing of yours. Trump loosened regulations on toxic chemicals. Tim Walls cracked down and banned the PFAS. And oh, would you look at that? RFK endorsed Trump and didn't endorse Kamala and Tim Walls, almost like he's a total fucking hack. $2.2 billion increase in K-12 school funding, sectoral bargaining for nursing home workers, this is what he did as governor with a one-seat majority. And I haven't even gotten into, like I said, when he was in Congress, he opposed the Wall Street bailouts. He voted against outsourcing deals. Um, you know, did a, as governor, he did a massive Minnesota infrastructure bill, protected construction workers from wage theft. I mean, uh, banned medical providers from withholding care over debt. And that's, not, I'm only giving you a little piece here, right? And look, he also walked the walk, so he gets to go up there and talk the talk. And look, I think this is going to pay dividends, man. With this guy being front and center, him being the most popular person in the race, J.D. Vance or Trump, depending on the poll, being the least popular person in the race. These are body blows, bro. And they're landing. They're definitely landing. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.